Well, standing here with James Hinchcliffe, and okay, let's talk about the fact that as hard as it was on bump day, how hard was it the next day when all the other drivers were getting back in their car and you weren't? All right, there were efforts to get you into a car after that day, which would have meant you're taking the place of some other driver. How close did that get? Honestly, that was... Yeah, different kind of survival for James Hinchcliffe today. And of course, one of the key things is the fact that the Indy 500 isn't just a race. It is the crown jewel of what can only be described as the greatest day in racing. Well, when it comes to IndyCar, Danica Patrick is a finisher. When she left the series seven years ago, she had set the record for the most consecutive finishes. Made it to the checkered flag 50 times in a row. But as any race driver will tell you, that's not enough. You also need to be fast to win this race. And this month, the Ed pa Carpenter team has given her a fast car. So let's think about this. A person who can finish with a fast car, that could make this a very memorable last race for Danica Patrick. In fact, his strategist, John Boslog, was just telling him, you've got plenty of speed, plenty of power. Let's talk about how, what he's going to do on this restart. Can he get by these three guys? With Indy. So here's the question. Inside, outside, which way do you pass well, in that restart? He, he, he kept talking. I don't know. It, it... Willpower. It is such a long way from Toowoomba, Australia, to victory lane. Yeah. He gets a hug from Simon Pagino. Let's talk about what this means. What a long journey you've had to this place today. Man, I just can't believe it. All right, so you're leading with just a handful of laps to go, and the yellow flag comes out. What's going through your mind? Uh, I'm just like, I have to get these guys. All right, you've had some low moments in your life, things that got away from you. We were so close. Does that make this so much sweeter for a guy who's at your age 37 years old to win this Indy 500. I was wondering if I would ever win it. And Remember this guy, Juan Pablo Montoya, did a little bit of winning in like Formula One, NASCAR, Daytona. Oh yeah, he's got a couple of those Indy 500 victories. He's been on a bit of a holiday, but he is back, officially running the Grand Prix as a tune-up for the 500. So what's it like getting back in the cockpit? Is there any rustiness, or was it just like getting back in the saddle? It was really easy. Okay, so officially this is just a tune-up for the 500, getting you and your crew back together so you know exactly what it's like. But yeah, are you thinking good. it that way, or are you thinking winning this race? Well, we're going to go for it. Eh? Well, Alexander Rossi is not quite ready to play the role of the returning champion. Sure, it was just last May here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway that he pulled off one of the greatest upsets in racing, winning the Indy 500. But the Grand Prix, that's a different creature. You're running a different direction. He has yet to go into turn one knowing what it felt like on that last lap. So, yes, this is a special race at a very special place. Well, we got to talk to John Boslaw because he's the guy that figures out the strategy. Though John kept saying, you need to talk to everybody else on this crew. And we know what it means for Will, but what does it mean for the rest of these guys going into the Indy 500 to get that win that had eluded you this year? It's a lot of momentum. Uh yeah, standing by with a fourth place finisher, and that's Simon Pagino, who didn't have such a great weekend except for one thing. And that's, you have to remember, he is still leading the championship, which is really important. And, and why wasn't it such a great weekend? Just didn't come together? No, you know, so... All right, let's turn our attention to the big one. Next week, you start practicing for the Indy 500. How much do you have to turn that mindset around? And, or is it just like that? You just suddenly wake up one morning and think, I'm doing ovals. Already done. <laughs> Standing by with Graham Rahal. You want to know how hard it is to be an IndyCar driver? Show up these hands. Look at the blisters on both hands. And Graham, we have to ask, how hard of a race was that? Yeah, it was hard. I mean, yeah, in fact, one of the reasons they didn't do the test session was because they wanted to be able to preserve that machine. And we should point out, we understand there's going to be some fireworks off to the side of the track when they go by. Fireworks on the track and off the track. And we're green here at Virginia International Raceway as the Dyson car, Guy Smith, kind of moved up into the lead and looked like he has command right now. A much better start than they had here last year. Remember, they had problems with the Dyson cars that came together, and as a result, there was a big pileup going into that first turn. But it looks like everybody's making it through cleanly. Yeah, and part of the problem that we've seen all weekend long, you look at the front of that car, you can see all the grass that has already accumulated on the inlet for the radiator for the air coolers right there. And what we've seen is as a car goes off, when they come back onto the track, they bring lots of debris, they bring lots of grass that will slowly but surely make this track slicker and slicker and slicker. And we should talk about the fact that while there is no championship at stake for the muscle milk car, there are some other stake things at stake. For example, Lucas Lure with 48 victories. Yes, he has the record. He has the most victories in, in the American Le Mans racing, but he wants that magic 50, which would require him to get one today and one more at Petit Le Mans. Let's go to the GT battle, where the Risi Ferrari yesterday, well, they have kind of had some adventures. They were the fastest car at one point, but ultimately lost that fast lap to the BMW. But even when they were on their next fastest lap, they've had a problem at one of the turns. 
So the Reese Ferrari continues to go around, and, and they were able to repair that. What they did was that, in addition to repairing the under tray, they also created a new aluminum panel that was going to go into place so that if they were to have a problem, do the same thing they did yesterday, they would not break that same oil line. So yeah. you learn something with every mistake that happens. Isn't that right in season? All right, let's take a look at what caused the flat uh -huh. there. They came together. And that's exactly what did it at that moment. There's a wrong hit, wrong connection at the wrong time, caused a flat on that car, the number 31 car, as those three GTC cars were battling. Let's take a look at what happened. Remember, this was early on in the race. On the outside, and there you see the Corvette just moving to the outside mm. just a little bit, and that was just enough that uh, to make an evasive maneuver that Porsche went off course. And what we're seeing here is the GT battle. That is the lead car right there, that Ferrari, with right behind the car being driven, the Viper being driven by Dominic Farbacher. You can see them as they're going through, this is coming off of the, uh, the lead straightaway, going through the first set of turns. And now we're looking back at the BMW that is right behind them as well. And those Vipers are not letting that Ferrari get any kind of a lead. They are dogging them all the way, all around the track as they come back around for another lap. Now, having said that, the Ferrari does not seem to be falling back into the clutches of the Viper. That gap Steve seems to be staying about the same. Let's take another look at what brought out the caution. And there you see, as that P2 car was coming up right behind the PC car, it just hit the back of that car. Got it now. Oh my gosh, we have a championship issue on the track right now. Mike Wash, that black and blue car, and he is seeing red right now. You saw he came together with the number 18 car. You see they came together. We didn't see what led into it. Both of them sitting off to the side. And this Ryan Brown, Ryan Booth in that number 18 car, this has huge championship issues right now. Instruction how to get that car back out onto the racetrack. Meanwhile, we do not have a full course yellow. They are still racing out on the racetrack. You see Antonio Garcia, that's the view from his car, coming up with that number 48 portion to the left. He's trying to work hard to stay up with the BMWs. Meanwhile, we've got the Viper trying to get around and see if he can figure out a way. That number 22 car off to the side is a GT Challenge car, not in the same class. The move going onto that front straightaway with a little bit of a dog leg in it. And then we've got the Whoa. Muscle Milk car, the leading car off the track. The one being driven by Klaus Graf. Don't know what caused it, but he has gone off course up there at the Oak Tree Turn. Yeah, and I think the uh, number six car is going to be in the Catbird seat. Oh, oh, we've got contact there. That was Ouch. between two of the Porsches. It looks like that's the number 48 Porsche. Wow. That's a GT car together with the car. Oh, the huge crash with Enrique Cisneros and or, or Eduardo Cisneros in the number 31 car. Number 31 car right now being driven by Eduardo Cisneros goes into the tires, flips up over onto the top, fortunately lands bottom down, but that was a massive jump when those two cars came together. Once again, the number 48 car, which was a GT car, then the other car, the number 31 car, which is a GTC car. In the number 48 car was Marco Holzer. In the number 31 car was Eduardo Cisneros. And you see the damage to that number 48 car, the uh, right rear tire hanging off to the side. And now we're going to see where it's actually gone up over the barrier and landed on the tires. And I see the door open. We see in the pits the concern of the family members that are along pit lane. That was a very frightening accident. You could see the marshal's point there. And there we see the driver, Enrique Cisneros, wow. or Eduardo Cisneros, getting out of the car. That is a great sight to see. What an incredible shunt as the two came together. He hit the wall, flipped up over, and actually did a complete flip. And now you can see him pointing over to the other Porsche, the one being driven by Marco Holt. So thank you for the thumbs up. We appreciate that. And he's looking over and going, what? Yeah. What was going on there? Yeah. and. Uh Remember, this is the last lap. We've already gotten the white flag. This is the last battle that they have as they come around. And even though it's only one position, boy, you can tell that he wants it so badly. Tommy Milner in that car, trying to figure out if he can find a new way to get by. For round Oak Tree, it's basically going to be a long drag race to try to figure out if he can catch up at all to that BMW. And the BMW folks have been saying, we don't have the top speed. Of course, I've also been hearing that out of the Corvette folks as well. Yeah, that's right. There's been a lot of bleaching going on, hasn't there? There's the leader in the race, Lucas Lure, the number six car. 
Lost the lead at one point. Guy Smith had it, did a great job of getting it back. I think the team did a great job. Pitch strategy, bringing him in at the right time, as it turns out, with that long yellow flag. He comes back around that final turn, goes along the pitch straight, and it looks like he's going to get win number 49. He points to the team, says congratulations, thank you. And Lucas Lohr has his 49th American Le Mans Series victory as Team Muscle Milk wins here at Virginia International Raceway. Meanwhile, the number 62, Reese Ferrari, being driven by Matteo Malicelli, is doing a phenomenal job. They were fast at various points during the practice. They showed flashes of speed, but it just came back down to the issue of trying to have the time to be able to make it to the end. Meanwhile, we're on board with the 551 car being driven by Ryan Briscoe. As he comes around the final turn, he's going to take the checkered flag, and their team strategy is working. Ryan Briscoe gets the victory together with Scott Tucker, moves them up just slightly in the points battle against Scott Sharp. There you see Scott Tucker standing out there, thankful to his teammate, Ryan Briscoe. And we're going to give the battery tender hard charger award to that guy right there rich white if you just joined us he did an incredible job today of avoiding the cars spinning and flipping in front of him following the action and he did a phenomenal job and we're very thankful that a he's safe and b he provided the absolutely phenomenal pictures that he provided during the course of this race. we're going to take a quick break come back and find out how all the classes have sorted themselves out Thank you.